Okay, welcome back. So we are looking at a question, uh, a case three example over here, one in which the ball goes up or the object is, the, the rather I should use more general terms, the projectile goes up into the air and it comes down but it goes past the reference point. So similarly, if you remember correctly, we had cases, Johnny drops something and goes down like that uh, and it shows some kind of motion. Oops. It shows some kind of motion like so. It goes up from there and comes down to there. That was case number three. Okay, so let's just get a new screen there for us. And let's say we've identified the case. The case is case number three. Always draw your own diagram, okay? Um, yeah, so let's read the question. Okay, welcome back. We are looking at a case three example. As I mentioned, our strategy is always read the question first, identify the case, indicate your reference system which I'm going to do right now and put upwards as positive and downward as negative. This is the system I'm choosing. You could choose downward as positive and upward as negative. That would just invert the calculations um, as well as um, some of your substitutions but everything you'll get the same answer in the end. It's all about how you interpret the plus and the minus. So let's read the question. A tourist takes a trip in a hot air balloon the hot air balloon is ascending, that means it's moving up, at a velocity of 4 meters per second. He accidentally drops his camera over the side of the balloon's basket at a height of 20 meters. That means this year, um, and it's not that clear, that there is 20 meters, okay, when it drops. Uh, calculate the velocity with which the camera hits the ground. So we're not concerned with little Johnny. If you remember, I used Johnny as an example. Uh, we are concerned with his camera's motion, okay? But for a, a certain point in time, the motion of the camera, Johnny, as well as the hot air balloon, is all at the same speed or velocity. Okay, so from reading the question, we can see that he drops his camera, but this isn't the same drop case like when you're standing stationary on a building and you let go of something, because then you are standing still, and it has your initial velocity. Right now, he's dropping it, but at the same time, he is moving up with the hot air balloon. He's ascending. Okay. Uh, okay. He's ascending and moving up with the hot air balloon at a constant velocity of 4 meters per second. He accidentally drops here at a height of 20 meters from that point. So let's consider this. This is case number two, uh, sorry, case number three. And if we drew that motion for case number three, we said you go up from here, it goes like so, right? And then afterwards, it tends to come down. So I'm going to ask us to draw that. And then at the same time, we are going to fill in the values for both cases simultaneously. Right. Okay. This is what I called case 3B when you do it by combined calculation. And this is when you do it by uh, separating the motion. Okay. So here we're going to have an initial velocity. Uh, let me just get a red pen over there. Here we have V initial. And the initial velocity of the camera, uh, this is a case 3, right? And we are concerned with the camera's motion. Ooh, we must practice handwriting. We are concerned with camera's motion, right? Okay, very good. Yeah, I think that suffices. Okay, V initial, the initial velocity is going up. Because remember I said when you're in the hot air balloon, if you're moving up, before something can come down, it must go up first. Because it was initially moving up, before it can come down, it must first come to a zero. So it goes from four, it slows down because gravity is acting upon it. It comes to zero and then it falls down. Okay. So V initial over here is going to be 4 meters per second upwards. Okay. V final over here is going to equal 0. And V initial over here is going to equal 0 because at its highest point it has a 0 velocity. Then I am going to put in the units because we are more comfortable even though our space is not that much. Okay. Our final velocity is going to be a negative value but we don't know what's the value itself. Okay. We're going to have a little g over here, minus 9,8 meters per second squared. We're going to have time, but we don't have the initial the time there. Here we are only concerned with the time up. Here we're concerned with only the time down from the highest point. And over here, 
v final, v initial time, little g is also present, and delta x is also there, but we don't have delta x, okay, in this case, and we don't have delta x over here. Right, okay, one, two, three, and little g, let's not forget little g, minus nine, comma, eight. Over here, this is where our v initial is going to be, it's going to be four meters per second, And we are going to get we're going to get v final over there, which we are not sure with what it hits the ground with, but it's some value and it's going to be a negative value. And little g acts upon the motion minus nine comma eight meters per second squared. And one more thing, one, two, we're missing time. The time here will be for the entire motion. Okay. And then finally, we've got delta y, which is this distance from the ground. And that's going to be minus 20 meters. Delta y is equal to negative 20. Because remember when I spoke about displacement, I said you run from there, you go so all around. And your displacement will be this distance from year to year. Okay? The shortest straight line from start to finish will be from there in that direction, like so. Yeah, clear. Let's just remove that. Okay, so the displacement for this object, when doing it by a combined motion calculation, is moving up and right down, you only consider this distance over here. Okay, the height above the ground, which it's dropped. If you're doing it by separating the calculation, you're going to calculate that as one delta x, and this is another. Um, yeah, so this is where the combined calculation helps us. Um, right. Okay, calculate the velocity with which the camera hits the ground. So we want v final. What don't we have? We don't have time. We don't have time. So, is there a formula without time? Yes, there's a formula without time. The last one over there has got no time involved. So let's just put it in. It's Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2G delta Y. We've got delta Y, we've got G, we've got, we've got everything. But we want Vf squared. So Vf, do you agree, is going to equal the square root of all of that. Vi squared plus 2 G delta Y. Let's just put it in. And what do I get? VI, the initial velocity is 4 meters per second upwards. So that's going to be a positive. Plus 2 times minus 9 comma 8. Right? Minus 9 comma 8. Uh, and minus 20. Yeah, that's clear. That's minus 20. Let's do some calculator work. I'll give you a moment to type that in. Square root of 4 squared my, uh, plus, was it plus? Yes. 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 20. And you get an answer of 20,2 meters per second. Okay, and remember this is plus minus here when we take a square root, and this is going to be the negative value thereof. So why is it negative? That means we turn it into a positive once we're done. 20.2 meters per second, uh, and I'm going to write the word downward because it is the velocity. Yeah. So that's a good case study question. I'm going to do two more examples with you. Those are examination level questions. And uh, please check out our series on how to study because doing the questions with me is not enough. You've got to go, take the question, practice it on your own in a different setting. Give yourself a break after 20 minutes or so. Uh, and then come back and try the question on your own. That way you will see uh, if you still know it, if you know all, all the things, and then compare your answers. All the best.